Pacific salmon are anadromous. That means they spend part of their life cycle in fresh water and part in the marine environment, which is salt water. Adult sockeye salmon from the Babine watershed swim all the way to the Alaskan coast. They will live in the vast ocean for two to three years. And then something triggers the urge to return home. Using a keen sense of smell, linked into a memory of their home stream, they begin the long journey home. This journey is fraught with perils. Predators such as sharks, lampreys, marine mammals, and humans all prey on sockeye salmon. Human catches occur in marine commercial gillnet and seine fisheries in both Alaskan and Canadian waters. If the sockeye make it through those fisheries, they face further harvest in freshwater, recreational fisheries, and First Nations food, social, and ceremonial fisheries. Each type of fishery has limits on how many fish can be caught. And Fisheries and Oceans Canada tries to manage the sockeye stocks so enough fish return home to spawn. Let's get back to that keen sense of smell. When the sockeye will fly, and possibly before that, they begin remembering or imprinting on the smell of their home water. This memory becomes implanted within their senses so that they can find the same stream that they were born. If they are lucky enough or smart enough to avoid marine predators, nets and fishing lines, they will enter the bad bean river and face a different set of perils. Bears, eagles, and more recreational fishers will try to catch them. Sometimes the water temperatures are very high and the fish burn through their stored energy reserves. Did you know that once they leave the salt water of the Pacific Ocean and enter the fresh water of the Skeena River, they stop eating? They must depend on stored energy reserves to fuel them for their trip home and through the process of spawning. The warmer the water, the quicker they use up those energy reserves. Sometimes the river level is very high and they must swim against the strong currents. This uses more of that precious energy, making it less and less likely that they will survive to spawn. If they make it all the way home, they can be faced with drought conditions. Their home stream may not even be accessible because the water is so low that it flows below the gravel on the stream bottom. They wait and wait, swimming near the mouth of their stream. Rain and lots of it is what is needed during those dry years and at the right time. In some years, the fish simply lose. Their streams remain dry and they do not spawn. For every female that cannot successfully lay her eggs, it means less sockeye coming home to spawn in the future. In Lake Babine Nation's territory, we are glad to welcome the sockeye salmon home. We celebrate their arrival. Sockeye salmon are our primary food source, and it is prepared in many different ways. We watch the fish as they reach the Babine with a counting fence. Here, we count every fish through the fence. Sockeye, Chinook, Pink, Coho, and Steelhead are counted. We will harvest some of the sockeye at the fence by dip netting them out of the live traps. We count the number of sockeye that we use as food, and we never take too much. All of the fish that pass the Babine fish fence will swim upstream to their home streams. They will pick a mate and then prepare a nest in the gravel. This nest is called a wed, and it is where the little salmon eggs will live and grow. When the digging of the wed is complete, the male and female somehow communicate that it is time to spawn. The male will sometimes nudge the belly of the female with his nose, and this encourages her to release her eggs. 
as she releases her eggs. The male will release his milt or sperm. The eggs will become fertilized and drift softly into the gravel nest. When the female has laid her eggs, she will position herself so that as she digs gravel with her tail, the current will help move the gravel over the wood. After much digging, the eggs become snugly covered in gravel. They are now safe and secure, with life-giving waters flowing all around them. As the eggs lie in their gravel nest, the parents struggle to survive just a little bit longer to protect their nests. After a few days, they just don't have any energy left and they die. The carcasses that the bears carry into the forest will fertilize the forest vegetation as well. Salmon provide valuable nutrients to countless plants and animals. As summer turns to fall and fall turns to winter, the eggs remain in their gravel nests. Quietly growing inside the eggs, at first they look like little round orange marbles, but by January they have developed their eyes. The eyes look like little black spots inside the egg. Once the eyes develop, further growth takes place very quickly. And by moat, there's a little fish inside the egg that really is too big to stay inside the egg. This little fish is called the alvin, and it hatches out of the egg. These alvin are funny looking. They have a big orange belly called the yolk sac. The yolk sac is the food. And as they continue to grow and develop, that yolk sac gets smaller and smaller. When the yolk sac is gone, the alvin has developed into a fly. With some energetic tail wiggling, the flies swim up and up through the spaces in between the gravel that covers them until they're out. They struggle to the surface and gulp air. This is so they can fill the swim bladders. Once they have the swim bladder activated, they could swim up and down in the water column, searching for food and trying to avoid predators. Sockeye fly like to live in a lake. Somehow they know if they need to swim upstream or downstream to get to the nearest lake. Once in the lake, they eat an organism called zooplankton. Most of the fly will stay in the lake for one year. Starting in April each year, the fly start to change into smolt. Smolts look very different from fly, and they behave differently too. They become more silver, and instead of being happy to hang around the lake, they want to start swimming downstream with the current. Their bodies start to change, so that when they arrive at the estuary, they can tolerate salt water. Like Babin Nation Fisheries Program have a smoke counting project. There are way too many smoked migrating out of the lake for us to count them all. But we do a milk recapture program to estimate the number of smolts. Each year as the sockeye smolts leave our territory, we celebrate them and say goodbye and wish them a safe journey. At the invisible migration ceremony, we drum and sing and offer woe to the smokes. We look forward to the time they will come back home. In about three weeks, the smokes will arrive at the estuary. They like the food there.
they will eat and grow. Once big enough, they will begin the journey north into the open ocean off the coast of Alaska. They eat and grow and feed other creatures. After two to three years in the ocean, they sense it's time to go home. We will await their arrival so that the cycle of life can start anew.